Uh, yes, we'll wait a while. Yeah, fine. Yes, sir. Yes. A very good morning to all. Welcome to our first session, day one of the online lecture series organized by the Department of English, Kharagpur College, and the Department of English, Agra SSB College. This is Jointa Kumar Murmu, Assistant Professor and Head Department of English, Kharagpur College. I would like to thank Dr. Bidud Samuntu, Principal Kharagpur College, and Dr. Deepak Kumar Tamali, Principal Agra SSB College, for encouraging us to organize this online lecture series. I would like to thank Dr. Saurabh Nag Ondathana Mahavidyalaya and Sri Tanmoy Kundu Midnapur College for helping us to reach out some of the eminent speakers on our panel and Mr. Srikanto Vasak who is helping us to stream this series live on YouTube. I would also like to thank my dear colleagues and students of our department. Without them, this would never ever be possible. Now, I would like to request our respected principal, sir, Dr. Bidut Samanto, to deliver the inaugural speech. Thank you, Jayanta. Good morning and welcome, everyone. We are going through a very difficult time due to COVID-19 pandemic and subsequent lockdown. Most of the people are distracted from their normal routine and our attentions become wanderer. In the beginning phase of lockdown, we we all of us were unable to plan what to do today and what to do tomorrow. Our students' community has been affected most adversely. Their attentions become under us. At this juncture, we thought of a routine of online classes. Thanks to advancement of technology and our teachers, our teachers broke the lockdown of their mindset and came forward with their upgradation in ICT and started online classes for students of all the departments of our college. Although online class is not a replacement of classroom teaching, most of the students upgraded themselves with the ICT and joined online classes. The situation also created an opportunity for the distant people throughout the world to online classes and lectures. We can also hear out those respected teachers until now who remained out of our reach. I am proud of the English department of our Kharagpur College who has prepared a wonderful routine for the next two weeks. It has created an opportunity for the students of our college and neighboring colleges to listen to some of the great teachers in their respected fields. I'd like to thank Dr. Deepak Kumar Tamili, principal of Agra SSB College and his English department for joining hands with us to make this series a success. Dr. Tamili is the senior most principal in our state. I convey my regards to him. I would also like to express my heartfelt <coughs> gratitude to Dr. Somipendra Benarji from Gaurbongo University and Dr. Jaydeep Sharangi from New Alipur College. They will address our students today. I would also like to thank the eminent teachers from different corners of our motherland and who will join us throughout this month on this lecture series to be run from 17th to 30th June. I hope the students will not let their minds wonder. Rather, you enjoy this wonderful routine for the next two weeks and keep yourself engaged in this uh, in the, in studies and other activities including physical exercise and and social service i am hopeful that we will overcome this covid-19 pandemic situation and all of us will come back to our classroom soon i wish this lecture series a grand success thank you everyone stay safe and stay connected Thank you. Thank you, Principal, sir. Uh, now I would like to request respected Principal uh, Dr. Deepak Kumar Tamali from Agra SSB College to deliver a few words. 
I it is a great privilege and honor to me in welcoming all academicia students teachers and participants in 14 days online lecture series organized by department of english kharagpur college and department of english egra ssc college i also express my thanks and regards to dr vidyut samanta and teaching staff of egra ssc college of and of kharagpur college also express my thanks to dr swamipendra banerji and dr joydeep banerji for delivering their lecture two days in online series lectures i also thanks to all students of kharagpur college and egra ssb college due to pandemic digits of corona id outbreak more than 3.50 lakhs people already infected in our country and more than 11000 people are died till death due to severe crisis in all over world not only business economy finance and employment i think darkest day in the educational environment all schools college and university has been postponed till end of march and more than 1.4 billion students are affected from their regular teaching although mhrd and ugc has taken initiative to introduce online studies but majority of the students those who are residing in rural areas <coughs> or remote areas they are deprived i think in this situation a commendable effort made by the faculty of english department of kharagpur college and agra ssc college for organizing a lecture series that from today to 30th june for the benefit of the students of both the college and other students of our university i lastly express our resource person thanks and regards to our resource person delivering their lecture from today to 30th june for the benefit of our students committee again i thanks to dr vidyut samanta principal of kharagpur college for his untiring effort and teachers of kharagpur college and also colleague of egra ssb college i think our seminar lecture will be a grand success thank you everyone thank you dr tamili for your encourages a speech now i would like to request dr somipendra banerji to start his lecture but first let me introduce him to all of you it's my privilege to introduce dr somipendra banerji dr banerji has been teaching english literature in the post graduate level for more than a decade he has completed his phd from bisho bharati shanti niketan on historiography and politics of post independent indian english drama he leads the drama club of university of gold bongo and acts and directs plays with his students these include breaks galileo and santra soktok an adaptation of carol churchill's seven jews children in 2018-19 he received an international travel grant to present his research at the international federation of theater research conference at university of sao paulo brazil in 2017 in 2019 he completed the prestigious course from the national school of drama new delhi his areas of interest are modern indian theater 19th century bengali theater and gender studies today dr benerjis will speak on the topic of artifice gender and performance a reading of the way of the world dr benerjis uh yes uh, thank you uh, very much uh, joyanto Uh, my regards, uh, my respects to uh, the, the principals of Kharagpur College and uh, Agra SSB College for uh, for for giving this wonderful introduction, and uh, of course, I mean to the organizers, uh, the English departments of uh, Kharagpur College and Agra SSB College as well, for uh, uh, 
you know, for, for, for making this initiative. And I'm really privileged to be the first speaker here. Uh, I, I have uh, seen the, the list and I've seen that uh, many eminent persons are, are coming up. Uh, uh, Dr. Joydeep Sharangi uh, will be speaking today. Uh, Omrida of Vishwabharati will be speaking. Uh, Streyadi will be speaking. Uh, and, and lots of other uh, very, very uh, eminent persons will be speaking. Uh, so, okay. So, we will start. But uh, I'll just, uh, because, see, we have been at our uh, university, we have been taking online classes for quite some time. So, uh, I would just, uh, I, I, if, if anybody, if, if the students are not uh, very used to uh, or, or conversant with this, I would just request uh, something that uh, already has been said. Everybody should turn off their microphones, okay? Otherwise, uh, there will be a constant feedback. A camera also, but uh, and and yeah, uh, and when you are uh, when you are entering, please please press the ask to join button. Uh, otherwise, you will start present. Uh, right, join. So we have a presentation. You can uh, you can start it uh, right now. Uh, and and we will talk and uh, go with the presentations as well. Uh, yes. some of our, yeah, some of our students uh, from the University of Gorbanga are also here today. Uh, so so let us see. I hope uh, our students enjoy this. I mean, everybody I hope will enjoy this. Right. So the title of my paper today is "Artifice, Gender and Performance: uh, A Reading of the Way of the World." And now, uh, yeah. So so I would uh, what I would do I would uh, try to take a look at uh, critically, I'll take a look at the way of the world. I presume that uh, the students have read the text uh, and they have, they are more or less aware of uh, the text because uh, in this brief one hour, I won't get the time to, to touch upon all the issues. But of course, I will try to uh, deal with certain major issues. And uh, another thing, if I'm not audible for any moment or if there is, there might be network issues, please tell me that so that I can understand. Okay. Okay, the next, uh, yeah, yeah, what is, uh, yeah, go to the next slide, please. So I start off with uh, this, uh, uh, the theater, drama, and performance. Now, for the students, it is very important for us to understand the different between uh, theater, drama, and performance. Now, uh, particularly for literature students, see, The Way of the World is a play. The Way of the World is a, is a, is a play. So how do we approach the way of the world? Now, one of the problems with uh, any dramatic text is that we have been dealing with dramatic texts as literature. Okay, so we have been seeing this as part of literature, but uh, after, I mean, somewhere in the middle of the 20th century, there was a, a, a rise in what we refer to as theater studies. So, theater studies should always be distinct and different from literature studies. Now, what we do is uh, we we balance. Okay, so as uh, both theater scholars and literary scholars, we try to strike a balance between on the one hand, what is theater and on the other, what is drama. See theater, uh, I mean, it will, it might take a long time to, to explain this really, but theater is the performance part. So what we see on the stage, the visual element is the theater, whereas the drama is the written text. So the way of the world congreves the way of the world when we are reading it. It is the drama that we are referring to. So in our talk today, and of course, performance is another extension after the predominance of theater studies in the 1980s uh, in New York University, primarily Richard Schechner started something called the Department of Performance Studies, which was extending the realm of theater onto everyday life. Now today, after Judith Butler, primarily, we know that performativity or performance is an is a, is a is something that is inherent with us with what we do with the role that we play like for example, uh, right now you are uh, at your homes locations are very important we are at our homes in front of a mobile screen or in front of a computer but at the same time you are role playing as a student or as the teacher of the department of Kharagpur college or agra ssb college so we are constantly role playing. So there are performative selves, selves within us. So performance studies basically explores these areas. Our talk, uh, or, or rather what we would try to do is try to blend these, these ideas of literary ideas about the drama and theater as well. So I would, uh, yeah. So 
moving on to the yeah the next slide please uh, moving on yeah uh, i won't talk uh, about the background as such but you all know that uh, there are uh, there are there are uh, you know the restoration began with the with the with 1660 when charles the second was restored to the throne i am not going into the details of that uh, so so this is yeah so the first few challenges that uh, charles the second had to face just after he had uh, you know taken the throne uh, were two major disasters that struck. number one was the plague the, as you can see it is the image of the great plague of 1665 now um, in the covid 19 days there have been many seminars webinars actually on the plague on the pandemic and we have been reflecting back on the idea of the plague now try to locate the 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 faces of these people they are they, they are quite nonchalant and the dead bodies are being removed on these cartwheels yes the next image the next image is a darker one where we will find people reacting uh, in a way we are doing right now probably although the dead bodies they were that was scattered in the london streets in those days we are not yet get to we are we haven't yet seen thankfully those um, anyway, so there is this, you know, this darkness of this image suggests the, the dingy atmosphere of London at that point of time. And, uh, you know, London was, was, did not have any kind of sanitation practices, proper sanitation measures, which led to a rise in the, in the plague uh, cases. And, of course, there were not proper, uh, you know, devices to fight. The next image is an interesting one that I would like to share with you, uh, is that of the, the plague itself. Uh, I mean, the plague doctor itself. Yeah. And the plague doctor is, uh, uh, is uh, you know, this, this was the mask or this was the attire that the plague doctor used to wear. And look at the beak in particular that would, you know, allow the plague doctor to maintain the distance that uh, he was supposed to do while, while curing the patients. Okay, the next one. So this is, uh, the plague was one devastation. And if, as if the plague wasn't enough, the very next year, uh, what struck uh, London was the Great Fire. So in 1665, the Great Plague, and in 1666, the Great Fire of London. It was a dry uh, summer. People had gathered logs of woods, and they were preparing for a for a terrible winter. So which is why the when the fire, uh, you know, you know, struck, it spread rapidly, and the fire had burned for three continuous days. Tana tindin dore yagunta zole, ebong ete. Huge losses were, were, were registered, although many more people died out of plague, but uh, in the fire, many of the, many of the London cities, I mean, the entire half of the city was devastated. St. Paul's Cathedral and Moto Boro Boro churches, about 87 churches were destroyed. Um, okay, so, right. So, so you know, these, these fires, were, I mean, what, what some critics also say, suggest is that uh, it is because of the plague and it's because of the fire that London actually went on to a to an act of reconstruction okay and this reconstruction in a in a certain way to, to appear in a, in a fresh image in a new image uh, Jointo, I mean some messages are coming that some of our students cannot join can you please uh, the host might just check if if somebody is uh, allowed Sir, it. actually, uh, I am hosting this series, and I am also presenting that slide. That's why I am okay. unable to join them. Oh, oh, oh. Anyway, uh, so uh, that is that is fine. Okay, so now having said that, we can go over, move over to the restoration comedy of manners, uh, because the way of the world is a restoration comedy of manners, and instead of going into the characteristics as such, what we do is we will briefly take a look at the the at certain keywords. And I hope uh, with the with a, with an exploration of these keywords, we can try and understand the restoration comedy of manners. Now, number one is urbanity, as you can see. Now, London as a city was as a was a fast growing city, it was always happening. This was continuously happening. Now, in particular, during the restoration, after the restoration, the population of London was greatly increasing because of the shifts in socio-economic patterns after the return of Charles II. So as a result, the, 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 the urban classes were emerging very fast and the restoration comedy of manners emerges or becomes uh, an, an urban 
um, or, or uh, uh, a genre that represents the 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 you know the the urban classes. Okay, the urban people. So it becomes a comedy of the urban classes. With a very important issue is here, which in the you all know that in uh, the restoration comedy of manners, particularly in Congreve's The Way of the World, wit uh, and humor becomes very important. But wit was not as we understand it today. Right, the the whole idea of wit was was quite different. Uh, you you will remember that John uh, that that Congreve, in a letter to John Dennis, his friend, he was distinguishing between wit and humor. And he, as for wit, he says that it it needs it's the art of speaking, it's the art of speaking pleasantly and elegantly. So there was there was this use of not only intelligence but also a manner associated with it, with the whole idea of wit that is distinct from the way we understand it today, right? And you should also, you know, uh, I would also write, like to refer here to Bonami Dobri. Bonami Dobri's restoration comedy is a very important work in this regard. And Bonami Dobri is referring to the art of the verbal pyrotechnics. You know, there's this flashy verbal brilliance that we always come across in the way of the world and in other restoration comedies as well. So the verbal pyrotechnics is a, is a term that Bonami Dobri introduces here. And it is also very important here that uh, uh, Bonami Dobri actually quotes John Palmer. John Palmer who said that sex in Congreve is a battle of wits rather than a, a battlefield of the emotions. So sex in Congreve is a battle of the wits rather than a a uh, 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 battlefield of emotions. So you can understand how sex or, or sexuality or gender is, is strongly associated or connected with the whole idea of wit and, and uh, the virtuosity, the verbal ingenuity, the raillery, okay, the, the innuendos that we constantly come across in a play like The Way of the World. Now the next two uh, uh, you know, keywords we take together, this is licentiousness and immorality. Now, of course, with the entry of, with the coming of Charles II, what happened was uh, there was a, there was a, uh, I'm sorry, just a minute. Yeah. Uh, with the coming of Charles II and profaneness, okay, that, that set in and uh, partly as a response to or, or going against the Puritan, uh, the Puritan values, okay. Partly going against the Puritan values, uh, what happened was that, uh, I'm sorry, I mean, again, a phone call is coming and these are uh, troubles. So, so uh, yeah, so as, as a response against the Puritans, uh, immorality was setting in, okay? Immorality was, was constantly setting in and a certain kind of a profaneness was, was coming, coming back. So, so that led to the to the, to the rise in a, in a certain kind of a moral laxity, uh, to a certain kind of a predatory sexuality in the place that we can see, and therefore this this accounts for the licentiousness and a certain kind of an immorality in the in the in the stage then. Okay, next we have artifice. Now, artifice is very important. Artifice and artificiality. The way of the world, if you can if you can look at it, it's all about a certain artificial presence. Although I won't say it's all about because we will we will negotiate this later on as well. Uh, the way of the world is much about artifice, about how you present yourself. So there is a lot of tension between appearance and reality and appearances hardly were what was real. See, this is something that is distinctly different from what the Renaissance was promoting or projecting. The, in, in the Renaissance, the external nature was a, a, a symbol, became a symbol, became an extension of internal self. So the, so the person, uh, what he appears would also be what he is in reality. This was extreme, uh, this, this, uh, we, we get the contradictory picture of this image in the, in the restoration, where we see that the appearances and the realities are quite distinct. People were using masks, so uh, if I, I won't get the time, but, but this is a very interesting issue that is uh, coming across, that is going through my mind, okay? Uh, because we are, we are using, we are becoming masked people nowadays. But in the restoration, not only the restoration, but from the Renaissance onwards, I mean, there was a 
very uh, significant use of the masks. Okay. Now, um, yeah. So aristocracy is the class. Now, this was a new class, the Restoration Comedy of Manners and the Way of the World. As you, as you can see, see, all of these people, what do the men do? Mirabal, Feinal, era, era ki kore, era ki chakri korte jai? Basai chore ki era, ba trene, local trene kore era chakri korte jai na. Thika chai, so they are the aristocracy. The aristocracy doesn't go to work. The idea of job or the idea of a, of a you know, of a, of a paid kind of an employment wasn't there. And the aristocracy were, were basically living on their property, which is why property becomes an important issue. And these plays were reflecting the elitist class. Now, why this is happening, I will come back to this later on. Yeah, the next, the last point is, is that about fashion. Fashion became a very important element during the, the, the restoration. And, and um, well, Charles II introduced new kinds of fashion. Um, Charles II introduced and in, in, in his, in his uh, various documents, Charles II instructed men of the court, the nobility, to use a particular fashion, to use a particular dress. So the outward appearance or the outward artificiality of the restoration people, or the restoration stage particularly, had a lot to do with the changing fashions. And you see, elaborate costumes were worn. You can, if you recollect any image of Congreve or Dryden or uh, Alexander Pope, even up to the 18th century, you will see that they are wearing wigs, wigs, okay, or periwigs or periukes. Uh, there is a reference to these wigs, even in the way of the world. So these wigs were worn by uh, men and, and some people also resist, uh, I mean, some people also questioned this use of the wigs by my men and accused them of a certain kind of an effeminacy. Right. So, and women also wore, you know, elaborate. Uh, yeah. So, so, so this was there. Uh, right. So these are the these are the keywords with which we would like to uh, understand the restoration comedy of manners. And having said that, what we can do now is we will go to the text. Quickly, we will go to the text and, and briefly I will talk about the way of the world uh, and, the, and the thrust that I, that I would like to make in this particular uh, brief presentation. You see, the year of the way of the world's first performance is very important in this regard. I hope all of you know this, that uh, the way of the world was first performed in, uh, uh, in 1700. Eh? And 1700 was a turn of the century uh, event. You see, already... Already the restoration comedy of manners was in some kind of a decline. Because uh, you see, if you look at the restoration period in English literature, now we can try to look at this once again. It, is, it, it extends from 1660 to 1700. Some critics say that it extends up to 1720. Okay. The restoration period in English literature. But when we understand the restoration politically, then it extends from 1662 1685, when Charles II died, and Charles II was replaced by James II. And you also have to understand that this is not the way of the world. We often look at the Restoration Comedy of Manners and we look at the background of the Restoration Comedy of Manners uh, as a, a kind of a continuous um, movement of Charles II and his uh, court. But it is not the case. Because there are other, you know, rulers who are coming in, and and therefore the influence of Charles II or the ethic of Charles II uh, is is uh, minimized later on. For example, in 1685, uh, James II comes to the throne, and uh, then the glorious revolution takes place in 1688, where William and Mary, William of Orange and Mary, they start ruling. So by the time Congreve's play is performed for the first time, it was William and Mary's reign. And William and Mary were very entirely different from Charles II. Remember that, that the court had become more decent compared to what they was, were during Charles II's time. And there was a rising Puritan opinion. There was a rising middle classes, which is why all these are reflected in the way of the world. What I'm suggesting is that the way of the world is a brilliant balance of uh, what is the best of the restoration comedy of manners 
and at the same time it is it is acting as a bridge towards the emerging comedy of the next century that is the sentimental comedy so in the way of the world what we have is a movement away from the restoration comedy of manners towards the sentimental comedy of uh, to the sentimental comedy while retaining the basic aspects the basic features of the restoration comedy of manners and remember that the way of the world was not a success was not a stage success when we read these dramas after 300 or 400 years we tend to forget they are stage histories but it's very important you see the way of the world was not a success because people did not like the way of the world then it is only later on in history that way of the world has emerged as a, as a crucial text as a crucial intervention in what we understand as the restoration comedy of manners so on the other hand this this movement from uh, towards sentimentality can also be understood in this sense that uh, it was also reflecting the tensions between an earlier licentiousness and a later or an emerging ethic which is based on mutual trust this is a very important issue okay because you see if you look at the the plot paul and miriam muske a very very important critics on the way of the world they have suggested that the plot is based on a legacy conflict the plot is entirely based on a legacy conflict that is who will own up the property many of the restoration plays were concerned with issues of property issues of marriage right now uh, but 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 this but this if you look at the play then it is a battle between two groups there are intrigues and there are counter intrigues right so on the one hand it's the intrigue of mirabel to get miramant which is a, a kind of a semblance of a true love and mirabel and milamant uh, and and there are uh, you know obstacles in their path which is provided by uh, mrs marwood and mr fainel and uh, things like that others like that so so this 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 contest is basically a contest between on the one hand uh, sincere love mutual trust and on the other immorality and licentiousness so this movement is very central in order to understand the way of the world properly we understand this shift in in the basic you know ethos of the play uh right now now we will uh, for this is primarily for the benefit of the students there are two or three sections which i would like to highlight from the text and uh, uh, i hope as i told you this is the first uh, uh, issue that i'm picking up is in act 3 okay now in act 3 we see that uh, a foible has come foible has appeared uh, to lady wishford and lady wishford wasn't aware that where foible had gone mrs marwood has said that you see i have seen foible with mirabel ha ebong eta kichu kintu ora mane era somoshya ki jeta hocche apni kintu foible ke chepe dhorun thik ache lady wishford apni chhabben na তখন লেডি বিশ্বট ওকে বলে যে ঠিক আছে তুমি একটা কাজ করো তুমি আমার বসার ঘরে একটু বসো হ্যাঁ আমি ততক্ষণ দেখে আসতে বেটা কি বলতে চাইছে ফয়বল কি বলতে চাইছে এই বলে লেডি বিশ্বট ইজ গোয়িং টু মিট ফয়বল অ্যান্ড হোয়াট শি সেজ এবং গেস্ট এসছে বাড়িতে মিসেস মারবুট তাকে এন্টারটেন করা দরকার ঠিক আছে আমাদের বাড়িতে গেস্ট এলে আমরা গেস্টকে বসতে দিই জল টল দিই এখন অবশ্য আর কিছু আলাদা করে কাগজ দিতে হয় না খবরের কাগজ দিতে হয় না কারণ গেস্ট তার নিজের মোবাইল বার করে সে ফেসবুক আর হোয়াটসঅ্যাপ করতে থাকবে ফাইন কিন্তু তখন তাকে বই দিতে হতো বই সাজেস্ট করতে হতো তো সেখানে কি বলছে দেখো ডিয়ার ফ্রেন্ড রিটায়ার ইন টু মাই ক্লাজেট দ্যাট আই মে এক্সামিন হার উইথ মোর ফ্রিডম ইউ উইল পার্ডন মি ডিয়ার ফ্রেন্ড আই ক্যান মেক বোল উইথ ইউ দেয়ার আর বুকস ওভার দ্য চিমনি চিমনির কাছে কিছু বই রাখা আছে কোয়ালস এন্ড প্রিন্ট আ শর্ট ভিউ অফ দ্য স্টেজ উইথ বুনিয়ানস ওয়ার্কস টু এন্টারটেইন ইউ now the problem with this is that you see these books are not meant for entertainment these are purely puritan books by making them as books for entertainment congreve is belittling them okay making them you know uh, demeaning those books number one second is that by attacking these puritan writers he is is making an actually a parody of these puritan writers because he is making those people read those books who would have no impact whatsoever because those people would not read the books at all tai na mrs marwood ki ekon boi porbe na ki korbe mrs marwood kan pete shunbe foible are miss lady wishford er moddhe ki kotha ba kothon chols ar ekhane je boi ta ditiyo je boi ta refer kora ache a short view of the stage eta hocche jeremy collier er shei bikkhato pamphlet 
যেটা সিক্সটিন নাইনটি এইটে পাবলিশ হয় which is a short view of the immorality and profaneness of the english stage and this pamphlet was regarded or rather is regarded as one of the strongest uh, criticisms of the restoration comedy of manners and its immorality and congreve was responding to that right so so jeremy collier was attacking congreve uh, because of the immorality and profaneness of the restoration comedy of manners some critics say that the way of the world is an answer to jeremy collier's essay so collier's position here is very important and collier uh, has basically has basically attacked the the position of the restoration comedy of manners very soon after in the same scene when foible has come and uh, lady wishfort a tension sir for a realize courage her makeup has all gone see once again artifice we're coming back to words artifice her makeup is gone and uh, lady wishfort bolts uh, let me see the glass cracks says thou why i'm errantly fleed i look like an old peeled wall thou must repair me foible before sir roland comes or i shall never keep up to my picture so there was a picture and i cannot keep up to my picture i cannot keep up to my picture because sir roland is coming okay now this is this is very interesting because uh, the picture was once drawn when lady wishfort was probably younger and the picture is beautiful right but lady wishfort is no longer beautiful she has grown old and this picture is not an authentic representation of lady wishfort's self any longer so the artifice and the art and natural the binaries are are being explored by congreve now what foible says i warrant you madam a little art once made your picture like you and now a little of the same art must make you like your picture your picture must sit for you madam orthat oi eki art diye ebare mane je je brush ekbar picture er opor bolano hoychilo if you remember you can uh, you can also recollect uh, the picture of dorian gray by oscar wilde okay so shei je 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 brush ek shomoy oi picture ta banate sahajjo korechilo shei eki brush ebar apnar mukher opor porbe so that you look like your picture so remember that this is a this is a strange case of life imitating art and through this congreve is criticizing the restoration artificiality also remember that the congreve, that the that the comedy of manners the restoration comedy of manners is probably one such genre that was representing and simultaneously critiquing satirizing the society that they were talking of that is the aristocratic elitist society right okay the next and the last uh, portion from the text is in act 4 just uh, when the proviso scene is about to begin where we see that sir willful witwood is is there with milamant among milamant nijer mone apon mone o kichu kobita abritti kore choleche i prithi spare me gentle boy ebong tar sexual innuendos gulo khyal korbe i prithi spare me gentle boy press me no more for that slight toy thik ache to amake spare koro and press me no more and your cousin jayok idimonde sir willful eshe tokhon abaro bolche i swear it will not do its part though thou dost dine employs thy power and art natural easy suckling মিলমেন্ট বলছে আপন মনে ও উইলফুল কে পাত্তাই দিচ্ছে না বিকজ উইলফুল রিপ্রেজেন্টস দা কান্ট্রি সাইড ওকে ইন আ প্লে ইন দা রেস্টোরেশন কমেডি অফ ম্যানারস দ্যাট ইজ দ্যাট ইজ বেসিক্যালি এন আরবান ইউ নো ওয়ার্ল্ড দি আর देयर ইজ আ কন্ট্রাস্ট বিটুইন দা কান্ট্রি এন্ড দা সিটি দ্যাট কংগ্রি ব্রিলিয়েন্টলি ইউ নো ইউ নো রিপ্রেজেন্টস অর বিল্ডস আপ এন্ড হিয়ার সার উইলফুল উইটউড ডাজন্ট আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড দি দি ফ্যাশনস দা দা ডিসকোর্স অফ দা অফ দা সিটি so tokhon sir willful bolche anan suckling natural easy suckling bolte milamant kar kotha boleche poet suckling er kotha boleche thik ache john suckling er kotha boleche ebong 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 seta bujhte na pere sir willful bolche suckling or literally niche so willful has taken that word literally suckling mane baby one who sucks no 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 such suckling neither cousin nor stripling i thank heaven i am no minor i am a minor na ah milamant bolche ah rustic ruder than gothic jao bhago ekan theke thik ache you you don't understand me but you see sir willful realizes that he has made the mistake and he says well well i shall understand your lingo one of these days cousin in the meanwhile i must answer in plain english right so it is 
it is also, I mean, the difference between Sir Wilful Whitwood and Millamant is in the inability of Wilful to understand, to gauge what Millamant is actually talking of. Now, this scene is continued, and after a while, Mirabel comes. Millamant bols like Phoebus sung the no less amorous boy, like Phoebus sung the no less amorous boy, enter Mirabel, like Daphne she as lovely and as coy. Like Daphne she as lovely and as coy. Now this is this is a couplet from Edmund Waller's poem. Remember that both John both Suckling and Edmund Waller were important cavalier poets, important influences on Congreve and the restoration world as such. So <coughs> So what is what is shown here is that Mirabel matches Millerman Sweet. So Congreve is basically pointing it out that whereas Sir Wilful Whitwood does not understand what Millerman talks of, Mirabel is a perfect match for Millerman because he can complete the couplet that Millerman had begun. Now this doesn't end here because this couplet is actually referring to a mythological story of Apollo and Daphne. Now, Daphne was an nymphiad, and Apollo, being the god, was pursuing uh, Daphne. Daphne said no. Daphne didn't want to, you know, and this pursuance was, of course, sexual in nature. And Daphne ultimately transformed herself into a laurel, into a bay leaf. So instead of giving up, instead of giving herself to, instead of, you know, surrendering herself to, uh, uh, to, to Phoebus or Apollo, what Daphne did, she transformed herself into a bailiff and she got transformed. Now, uh, this, this, uh, there is a backstory to this. I mean, basically Cupid wanted to take a revenge on, uh, on Apollo and he shot the golden arrow of love to Apollo so that Apollo fell in love with Daphne and he shot the silver arrow of hatred onto Daphne so that Daphne would never fall in love with Apollo. So that was the kind of revenge that Cupid, uh, the naughty boy, took. Uh, on Apollo. Now to this, what Mirabel says, do you lock yourself up from me to make my search more curious? Or is this pretty artifice contrived to signify that here the chase must end and my pursuit be crowned for you can fly no further? So look at the options that Mirabel gives. This is where I would also like to draw attention to the whole idea of, uh, of, of gender and sexuality as it appeared. Now, what we refer to today as toxic masculinity might be something you can read here as well. Because Mirabeler Modde, a option tai ashena je milamant hoito shotti na bols. See, this is a problem that, that is still persisting in some way or the other. If we are enjoying films like Kabir Singh or, or, or that matter, right? So, uh, so in, uh, the girl, when she says no, we always, I mean, the, it's the, the toxic masculinity always believes that this is just an artifice. She is just trying to, you know, make it more curious. Now, of course, Congreve. For Congreve, this option also doesn't exist because Millamant, and she has, he has to show that Millamant loves Mirabel and she will fall for him. And it is an actually a kind of a make, made up an artificial uh, uh, posing that, that Millamant is always making. So, so Mirabel also says that. And, okay, so, uh, of course, Mirabel accepts and we move on towards the uh, a very important section, which is the proviso scene. Remember that the proviso scene begins here, not, not before the, that. We often think that the act four is the proviso scene. No, the, the proviso scene is, is, is back when we, uh, when we come to, to this, this particular part. Okay. Now, uh, this is where I would also once again draw attention to Bonami Dobri. Now, Bonami Dobri refers to something called sex antagonism as one of the driving forces of a play like The Way of the World, sex antagonism, which is uh, more than just licentiousness. And according to Dobry, this is a way of understanding new experiments about social living, about, you know, that, that the sex and antagonism is emerging from the mechanism of adjustment between men and women within the ambivalent institution of marriage. Because in the proviso scene, that is what exactly is happening. There is a, a kind of an exchange uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of what uh, Millamant is expecting out of that marriage, what Mirabel is expecting out of the marriage. And in a way, what they're doing, they're 
they are very carefully that is why the proviso scene is so important using the sex antagonism they are undercutting they are subverting the predominant um, accessories of restoration marriages which are based on mistrust so they are making fun of that they are satirizing that right okay so this is basically what i had to say about the text i mean of course this is not enough there are many other issues but now we will return uh, to the to the presentations jointo uh, uh, can we just come back to the presentation yes and uh, so i hope you have understood uh, by this time that we are talking of we were talking of the way of the world from a particular perspective now yes now the part of the the later part of my talk i mean whatever it is uh, i think i have about uh, 15 to 20 minutes more uh, to to speak of so in that what i would like to problematize is this notion of gender and this notion and the way we have understood we need to understand the theater you see the theaters reopen with the with the coming of charles the second now if you remember the charles the second is uh, against the puritans and the first thing that the puritans did or oh, the puritans were were against the theaters they were the anti theatricals and the first thing that the puritans did in 1642 was to close down was to shut down the theaters now what will charles the second do when when he comes to throne the first thing that he does is to reopen the theaters okay now this reopening the theaters remember that charles the second had spent his exile in france and not only in france but in other countries of europe as well the netherlands spain uh, you know and italy to a certain extent and primarily france so he's bringing the culture of france with him when he is entering england and taking up the throne now when the theaters reopen several changes take place you see the theaters were shut down they were razed they were devastated so the theaters had to be rebuilt and already i have spoke to you as uh, you know these two disasters of 1665 and 1666 so charles the second was having a very difficult time in handling these situations so what he does is that uh, he anyway so he had to reopen the theaters and he immediately issues two royal patents to william de avenant on the one hand and thomas killigrew on the other okay who are instructed to uh, construct two new theaters so the two new theaters come up one is drury lane and the other is dorset gardens now these become very different theaters compared to what we saw the last time during the renaissance okay and so what are the new things here movable scenery we come across something called movable scenery now the these the scenes and the setting sets could be moved there was an elaborate and a lavish design of these theaters there were these were extravagant huge and very you know very very special kind of designs that that came up christopher ren was the designer the architect of these theaters so in a way those theaters uh, ended up being quite similar now the actor the entry of the star actor the notion of the celebrity actor starts you know gaining ground from here and these include uh, some people i will come to these and of course the entry of the woman on stage this is what we will uh, slightly focus on because this is the first time in england that women uh, entered stage you know that uh, earlier uh, in in no theatrical tradition women were allowed on stage it's only in a later development that women started participating as actresses on the stage it's at a later development if you look at the history of bengali theater the bengali public theater only in the 19th century for the first time saw women on stage whereas india has a rich tradition of of theater okay so the entry of women on stage takes place now next slide yes i mean uh, yes this is the image of the dorset gardens theater if you look at it you can understand the 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 deep engravings the exquisite work that is there on the out outside right and um, you know so, so it's a very lavish and a very extravagant and this is not a gate mind you it is in the gate not a stage this is the stage and what we can see in the background if if it is not clear to you that is not a window or that is a painted scenery because you can see two ships also this is a set for the empress of morocco 
this is the set for the empress of morocco you see we understand it this is also something that students should always uh, remember that we need to question we need to question the canon the canon the english canon which is which is uh, which has been handed over to us because we have understood the restoration in terms of restoration comedy of manners only when you see a play like the empress of Mo morocco is not a part of the restoration comedy of manners okay this was written by uh, elkana settle uh, a playwright whom we hardly know but you know there were many uh, many plays different kinds of plays that were happening but look at the lavishness of the design and the ships are are visible in the background etc okay uh, the next image would be uh, that of the drury lane theater the theater royal yes again a uh, 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 restoration extravagant stage that was created Okay, the Drury Lane. Now, William Diavenant and Thomas Killigrew they had these royal patents, and the the system of the the um, what should I say the actor manager also became very prominent uh, then. Yeah, the next image is is that of yeah. This is Sir Thomas Betterton. You can see the wig. It's not his actual hair. It's his wig. Mm. Sir Thomas Betterton, one of the most famous uh, 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 celebrity actors of the period, and there was Charles Hart and other new actors that emerged who were celebrity actors. See, Sir Thomas Betterton is actually playing the role of Fainall in Way of the World in the first production of the Way of the World. Next, please. Yeah, in the next uh, image, what we have is uh, in the next image. Uh, Am I audible and properly? Can you see it? Uh, in the next image, this is Nell Gwyn, Eleanor Gwyn, or Len Nell Gwyn. You can uh, obviously understand the the sensuality that her her image is is portraying, is is presenting. So uh, Nell Gwyn is uh, one of the first restoration actresses. She is a celebrity actress, and she also later on became the mistress of Charles the Second. If time permits, I will talk about this as well because Charles II, the immorality and uh, the the moral laxity and the predatory sexuality that we usually associate with Charles II's reign comes from Charles II himself, because Charles II himself was a bawd, and when he died, he died childless, childless that is with a legit without a legitimate heir and several illegitimate heirs. So all these things are there. So Nell Gwyn was one of the most important actresses of the period. Uh, yeah, next, please. Now this is something interesting. This is not from the restoration, but this is a this is a later day image. I mean, of the 18th century. But this is a typical uh, representation of the breeches role. Okay, the woman in the breeches role, the role in which the women were cast primarily. I will come back to late this later on. Uh, we can go to the next image. Yeah, this is a very significant and a very famous image, actually, a painting by William Hogarth. And William Hogarth's uh, 18th century painting, this is entitled The Laughing Audience. This tells us something about the restoration audiences. Now, the distinction, I hope you remember, that I made between theater and drama. Now, when we talk of the theater, actually, there are many senses in which we understand the theater. The theater is a social space as well, which is why the COVID-19 has struck so hard at the roots of theater, because theater is a live performance form, and it and it and it thrives on social gatherings and not social distancing. Okay. Anyway, so in the restoration period. This was a typical audience. You can see the front part is looking at the, the stage where the play is going on and they're laughing, they're enjoying it. And in the box, that is what we, what we would be interested in, there is the nobility who you can see what they're doing. They're flirting basically with, with the girls. And who are these girls? These girls are the orange wenches. There was a practice during the restoration period of uh, girls who would take oranges and sell those oranges to the audience in the middle of the play itself right particularly in between the long pauses of the scenes and these girls would later on be used as uh, messengers to to deliver some messages and therefore establish some kind of a relationship with the actresses and the actresses also were uh, not very respectable people we will come to this again very soon okay so this gives us some kind of an idea this hogarth painting is uh, 
uh, yeah, this 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 uh, this Hogarth painting is uh, a very interesting uh, point that is is made about the audience. Yeah, next. So so that's the end of the images. Now we go back to the idea of uh, something that is my last take on this uh, on the idea of gender, sexuality, and performance. Now, if you just have to problematize it slightly, uh, we we first of all need to understand that this coming of the actresses was not a, a, a sudden uh, was not a sudden event. There was a huge shift that was involved, okay, from the boy actors to the real women. Now you understand, of course. I think what I mean by the boy actors because the last time uh, we were having plays, public stages. The boy actors were enacting the roles of women. Tikache. Ebong a boy actors there ke kintu man actor travesty training the other tarn chilo to kunkar dine. Jereke bala the travesty training. Ebong a boy actors there ke bishon babe train kora hoto in order to play the parts of the women and they were very popular. So jeta holo ei sholo sho bialish theke sholo sho shart of the theaters bondo thakar folle are boy actors pawa galona. The boy actors could not be trained, so the the women were, I mean, real women were introduced. Even of course, Charles II Chait. Now, ekhane kintu ekta interesting bapar ache. Ir age Puritans ra abar boy actors their bapar dey was shantushto chilo na. The Puritans were dissatisfied with the boy actors. Why? Because according to the Bible, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So that was one thing. So the Puritans uh, discouraged the boy actors. Taking up women's roles. Now, what happened was, was that Charles II had seen this in France, and Charles II was very, uh, you know, rigid about introducing women. So, what he did is that there was this other extreme that Puritans would be angered by. What was that? So, if boys would not should not wear women's dresses, then it was even worse for women to present themselves on stage. And Charles II decided to take that. In order to anger the puritans, okay, and introduce women on stage, and once women were introduced on the stage, women uh, uh, once women were introduced on the stage. Now this led on to two things basically. One, number one, the puritans were further angered. Number two, there was a strange kind of excitement that was generated in the audience, and this is my third point: the gaze of the audience. You you probably are aware of the term the the idea of the gaze okay and the gaze is of course this gaze is of course the male gaze the audience is primarily male and the stage with the introduction of women was catering to the taste of the male audience to a predominantly masculine look okay a voyeuristic pleasure of the male and therefore there was a sexualization and objectification of the women on stage now once again just pause and think that uh, whether the introduction of the woman can be or should be seen as an act of emancipation for the woman an act of uh, upliftment moral upliftment of the women or uh, is it further you know bringing down the position of the woman it is difficult to answer this because i would say both why both because at the at the at the same time this is the women are introduced for the first time but they are primarily prostitutes because no uh, respectable woman would act on stage this was the same thing that happened in india as well many years later so no respectable woman so the prostitutes had to be brought in they had to be taught they had to be uh, memorized uh, those lines roles but but at the same time it's true that uh, the, some kind of a representation some kind of an identity the the woman began to be to be getting okay which which allowed her to to speak for herself so these simultaneous movements are taking place now couch scenes breaches role and rape these were the three stock uh, figures introduced by the restoration dramatists in order to Ensure the sexualization of women. Breaches role is basically women in men's uh, garments. And uh, women in men's garments, women uh, taking up men's roles. So you see how it is, how gender is constantly in a state of flux. So the boy actors playing women's roles during the Renaissance, 
From there, we con we quickly shift to women as women and then women as men as well. Now, women as men don't think that they are uh, they were using the women as men and therefore they were in a kind of a covered state. No, the breaches role actually exposed the fine legs of the women. And again, there was a kind of a sexual gratification of the male audience. The couch scene, something that Lady Wishfoot also refers to in the way of the world, uh, is, a, is a state of uh, vulnerability in a state of partial undress. The women uh, is lying on the couch and therefore and leading on to other situations. Okay, So again, another device by which the woman's sexuality can be exploited. And of course, the tragedies, uh, we are not talking about tragedies here, uh, but but <coughs> but uh, the rape scenes were, you know, the, the display of violence and rape on stage became a violent phenomenon of the restoration tragedies. Ambroina by Dryden is a play that, that shows rape in such a devastating and a terrible, uh, you know, circumstance that I on reconstruction we, we would be we would be shuddering today okay again that was a way in which the 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 the, the woman can be exploited so and, and next what we have is these two remarks one by of course Richard Steele in the spectator what he writes Daco women or pretty persons are a great help to a dull play so play joto kharapi hok na kano age introduction of women eta kintu besh mane and a charm in a deal, at a Richard Steele Bolson. After Thomas Killigrew, Moneache, Jacket Patent, Royal Patent, they all Thomas Killigrew, the Nije Notun, the theatre, Tarjone advertised for the Thomas Killigrew Kibols. Female fictions embodied by beardless women would be useful and instructive. Beardless women, cannot beardless women because the audience were aware of a theatre where they saw bearded women because men were playing women's parts. Now, with the change, female fictions embodied by beardless women would be useful and instructive. Okay, okay the next. Uh, the ne uh, no, before this, please. Yes. So, property, social rank, uh, and laws of inheritance, right? These are, these are issues. Now, how do we, is, is this just about the female sexualization? No. Remember that the issues of property, something that is a major concern in the way of the world, Laws of inheritance, uh, social rank, these were valued during the restoration. And these were all male controlled. Okay, these were all male domains. Now, female sexuality was a threat to these areas of male control, already uh, you know, done by Charles II, because his, his uh, in inheritance, I mean, there's a problem with his inheritance because he had illegitimate children everywhere all of whom were, were claiming, and uh, some of whom Charles II himself recognized and made count here and duke there and all sorts of things. So, so in, order to, in order to contain uh, this, this, this power, that seeming power that the female seemed to enjoy through female sexuality, that female sexuality had to be objectified. That is what I'm trying to suggest. Now, Kirsten Pullen, a very important critic, what she's suggesting that male order would marginalize the specter of female power by converting the actress into a sexual object. So one way of controlling this female sexuality would be to transform it into a kind of a sexual object. Our Pat Gill, Pat Gill, you're interested in Tell a Pat Giller a seta, uh, to mother Pora Uchit. Uh, Pat Giller a seta is, is available in the Cambridge Companion to English Restoration Theatre, which is a very uh, important book as, uh, uh, as far as the restoration is concerned. Restoration Comedy of Manners is concerned. Okay, the voice is cracking. Uh, somebody is saying, I think these are network issues. I mean, uh, I'm sorry about that, but but let's uh, move on. You can see this, okay. So Pat Gill Bolche said the ridicule and exposure of sex sexualized females in the restoration comedies takes place. Now the exposure among ridicule of sexualized females. I would like to come back to the way of the world. Now, this is true, you can see, for Lady Wishfoot, Mrs. Marwood, and also to a certain extent, Mrs. Fainal. I am not bringing in Milamant deliberately because any talk about the way of the world concerns Milamant. 
Millamant as the voice of the woman, Millamant as uh, her identity and all that, that is true. That is there. But try to let us also look at the ways in which other women are marginalized. See, Mrs. Marwood is, is bad. And because she is bad, she is, uh, she, is, she is signed off. Lady Wishfort is ridiculed. Okay. And all of them have, and also Mrs. Fainal, who has got multiple relationships, and she still maintains a kind of a warm relationship with Mirabel, her past lover. So all these women who had relationships earlier, or, or their sexuality can be questioned, are marginalized. Whereas Milaman, the only virtuous character in the play, is you know shining brightly. So this 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 message is very clear in Congreve, right? <coughs> and Pat Gill's last comment, you can also see. Dako tinte category the Pat Gill bhag porchen restoration comedy of manners or women derke. Ek hote sexually active hypocrites, jara scheme kore, jara betray kore, jara entrap kore, jara deceive kore. Dui hote naive or thowa ignorant women, jara potentially amenable to seduction. Teen hote charming virgins who possess wealth and beauty. Chika chhe. Ta hole eika ne, amra dekte paachi je. Of course, some of the number one is category of sexually active hypocrites. Jara scheme kore, tarmode, of course, Mrs. Marwood porbe. Eh? Mrs. Fainal kichuta porbe. Jodi o ebabe ona ke define kora jaye na. Kintu because she he, she is also a part of Mirabel's counter intrigue, she is also in that category. At the number ta dako. Aj aj aj. Kotha galo. Charming virgins who possess wealth and wit. This is Milamant, of course, right? Charming virgin who possess wealth and wit. This is Milamant, the perfect kind. Or much can a lady wish for? Do lady wish for young noy? To who lady wish for is ignorant and lady wish for is unable to handle her. Okay. The last thing that I would like to next slide is briefly just just for two. Uh, I I'm think I think I I started uh, uh, after ten or twelve minutes, so I can take at least. Two or three minutes, Joanto. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. So, so in five minutes, I will wind up. So, the last part is point is about Lady Wishford, and this is a quote that I am. Uh, you can see is from uh, Mirabel, who says this in Act Two, uh, Scene One, so quite early. And what does he? What does he say? I think the good lady would marry anything that resembles a man. Though it were no more than what a butler could pinch out of a napkin. Now remember in those days, butlers had this uh, habit of, of uh, doing something, uh, some kind of a craft work with the napkins. While before serving the food, they used to make, uh, you know, uh, dolls, doll-like figures. Uh, so that would also, they would also make the figure of a man. And uh, so, so that Mirabel says that somebody would... Uh, Somebody, uh, the, so uh, the butler that the man that he makes, so you know, Lady Wishford, Wishford would marry even that. So we have laughed at this. And this is something that has suggested mockery and ludicrousness of Lady Wishford. Now, why is that? Why do we, I mean, first of all, my question would be to the, to the, the students uh, that, that do we, do you have, uh, I mean, do you have also, have you also felt that Lady Wishford is, is somebody to be laughed at. Why? Because she is old and she shows a desire. If, if that is the case, uh, my dear, it's, it's very wrong because desire should not have any age. Okay. And, and what Congreve is doing is deliberately uh, uh, ostracizing Lady Wishfort. Okay. Um, you see, uh, geriatric lust has always been a common theme in, in Congreve. And the next phrase that I'm referring to is indigestion of womenhood, widowhood. Later in the scene, Lady Wishford has this pompous and very artificial speech that she makes to, to, uh, to Sir Roland, where uh, Lady Wishford suggests that there is an indigestion of womenhood, suggesting the, the, the sexual alienation of the widow. But this has primarily been seen as a, an act of aberration. Now, why is this problematic? Why is this problematic? That is where we need to understand gender. I would suggest that this is a gendered attitude. This is a gendered attitude towards Lady Wishfort, towards women in particular, primarily because if the world that you are projecting is one of immorality and licentiousness, 
if there is the restoration wreck, who is the male who, who, who goes into all sorts of sexual escapades, okay, and that is fine with the male. What is the problem with the woman? So it is because Lady Vishwot is, is showing her desire. And Lady Vishwot is also ridiculed, remember, because she cannot handle her property properly, right? Because of her, um, because of her lack of, of this sense of decorum and uh, her lack of sense of proportion, she is she was she was at the risk of losing her property. But every restoration rake has done that. They have squandered their properties, uh, uh, running after a kind of a sexual predatory instincts. So so if so, that is where the problem lies, and we need to rethink these issues. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's the end of it, basically. But there is another slide. Can we see that? Yeah, so this is another thing that I, I thought if I got time, I would refer to this. Uh, this is, as you can see, uh, a painting called Tea Party. This is a 20th century painting by, by Louis Moller, Moller. And I would end the talk uh, in another five minutes by referring to the beverages, to the drinks. Okay. You see, during the restoration, as much as three, as much as three new drinks are introduced. One is, of course, coffee. The other is chocolate and the other is tea, something that we don't uh, give too much importance to. Why again? Because we marginalize this. Now, tea was introduced or, or popularized, not introduced, but popularized by Catherine of Braganza, the wife of uh, Charles II, who was brought from Portugal. See, the story of these three drinks is very interesting. Okay. Now, coffee, coffee came through Africa from Ethiopia. And it was just after the reign of, or just before the reign of Charles II, the, the first coffee house was established, 1652. The first chocolate house is set up in London in 1657. Okay, so five years after, and this is done by a Frenchman. And chocolate is, is brought to Europe by the Spanish from the New World. Europeans found it bitter and they mixed some sugar and they started drinking it. So... It was a drink, basically hot chocolate. And remember, these chocolate houses, everybody could not, could not enter these. These were elitist, aristocratic places, right? And tea was introduced and by Catherine of Braganza because Catherine of Braganza was from Portugal. And Portugal had been introduced to tea through its trades with China. So all these things, these three new drinks actually start coming up. And uh, the last slide, please is a brief history of something that we all love. So we end on a sweeter note. And uh, that is about the, the chocolate in the Victorian age, actually, right? In 1860s, uh, the emulsification technique was discovered. So this led on to the emergence of chocolate bars. Before that, chocolate table matro drink chilo. The fries was this company that started it off first. And very soon, the the leader we something that probably all of us admire Cadbury's dairy milk introduced themselves in the 1870s okay and so that is the journey of dairy milk because a person called John Cadbury established this and they they, they, they found out that instead of the drink if we can use chocolate bars instead uh, it becomes uh, it, 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 it was more popular right so on this note I, I end here uh, Thank you for listening uh, with, with some patience over this rather long talk, I think. And I hope you have enjoyed this. Okay, over to you, Joyanto, uh, or, or Pothik, I mean, whoever uh, would like to say. Thank you very much, sir, for your uh, lucid and uh, informative speech. Uh, now, I just would like to uh, ask the participants if they have any query. Uh, to uh, make to our sir, uh, please. If you have any question, raise. Sir is here to answer your queries. Hello, hello, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Audible. So, sir, I have a question. So, in the way of the world, in Mirabel, one says that even so, this is a way of the world of the widow. In, of the world means what is the perspective congress try to present here can you please explain me that 
uh, can you can you please repeat the lines uh so e uh, mirabha says even so sir this is the way of the world sir of the widows of the world yes i mean uh, it's very simple right right it's it's very simple nothing very special uh you see the that the phrase the way of the world is used three or four times in the play itself so because the way of the world is or the restoration comedy of manners is seen as reflecting upon the kind of life that the people the aristocratic people were were living so the way of the world means the the ways in which uh, people usually lead their lives and these are the consequences that is also uh, congreve is trying to suggest so and not only the way of the world but the way of the widows also so so basically the point is that the widows who have uh, gone astray who have shown desire who have uh, this this uh, shown this kind of a response would lead on towards such a consequence right it's a kind of a punishment that for lady wishfort is is being sought after that's it thank you sir the forum is open for all to ask questions yes are there any uh, i think there were some questions in the chat box but uh, i missed that earlier yes sir there was a question uh, yes uh, i have found one uh, this is an interesting name gender people so gender people is asking uh, do you think the women characters are demanding freedom on the stage uh, which is not given to them in the then society uh uh it's a good question uh but you see what do you think i mean whose theater is it you have to understand that first okay is it the woman's theater how much liberty that does the character have to to speak of his of his or her own self very little because it's the actor's theater it's the it's the actor manager's theater so what was happening was that uh, because of the i mean the 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 woman could not uh, script her own roles the woman could not script herself in any way but because of the introduction of women the play writing changed the styles of play writing changed and uh, women were given more emphasis initially they were sexualized but later on gradually we start coming back to 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 uh, you know other questions other forms of identity Uh, uh there is another another question from gender people are the women the embodiment of third wave of feminism uh just a minute oh, oh are the women the embodiment of third wave no 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 i mean kon kon women a restoration women to kokhonoi noy karon tokhono bhalo kore first wave hi shuru hoy if you look at the three waves of feminism the third wave is the latest ekhon jeta cholche seta ke bole third wave of feminism othoba post feminism tale restoration er shomoy kar mane actually feminism shobdo ta amra restoration er khetre koto ta byabohar korte pari etai doubtful thik ache onek shomoy amra milaman ke feminist hisebe dekhi kintu bolte paro je she is a, an early feminist feminist bola tao thik noy karon feminism is a, is a much later development okay Uh, there is another question. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Uh, sir, I have a question. Uh, first of all, uh, a lot of thanks to you for your outstanding lecture, uh, sir. In restoration comedies, uh, comic elements are uh, shown uh, uh, through some uh, through immoral tones uh, with uh, love, and uh, in uh, sentimental comedies, uh, comic elements are shown uh, through virtuous ways with uh, some tears, and uh, the sentimental comedies emerged uh, as the ultimate uh, consequence of uh, restoration comedies. Sir, my question is here. Um, Uh, is uh, sentimental comedy uh, is the uh, is sentimental comedy 
uh, fully contrary to uh, restoration committee uh well you see i i couldn't get you uh, entirely uh, but what you are trying to suggest is that uh, is there is there, if there is a sense of uh, money a, a cause and effect or a kind of a, a consequence of the restoration committee uh, well yes. Uh, yes and no you see there is in in con in in if you look at the history of the different genres these are egulo to sub genres comedy bibhinna sub genre thik ache so tumi jodi dekho comedy of manners kintu comedy of humors er dara bishon bhabe influenced thik ache mane ben johnson er comedy of humors on on the way of the world kintu ben johnson ka refer korche ebong tumi jodi dryden er essay of dramatic poetry poro tahole dekhbe je shekhaneo ben johnson er reference royeche তো কমেডি অফ ম্যানার্স এর মধ্যে এই স্টক ক্যারেক্টারস বলো বা ক্যারেক্টারের অ্যারেঞ্জমেন্ট বলো বা যেভাবে স্ট্রাকচারড হচ্ছে তার এই জিনিসগুলোর মধ্যে কমেডি অফ হিউমার্স এর যেমন ইনফ্লুয়েন্স আছে তেমন পরবর্তী যে সেন্টিমেন্টাল কমেডি আসতে চলেছে সেখানেও কিন্তু देयर ইজ অ্যান ইনফ্লুয়েন্স অফ দা কমেডি অফ ম্যানার্স টু আ গ্রেট এক্সটেন্ট বাট দেন সেন্টিমেন্টাল কমেডি তারও একটা তো মুভমেন্ট আছে সেন্টিমেন্টাল কমেডি অ্যাকচুয়ালি একটা বড় সময় ডিমেন্টাল <laughs> so you see it uh, it's a kind of a both a continuation and also a, a corruption of the comedy of manners itself yes sir i have got uh two two more questions have come up uh, one from sunjeev das sharma and uh, other from ivana choudhury do i take this uh, i can't uh, okay okay i take shonjeep das sharma's question first sir you said in your lecture desire should have no age bar sir it is also found in sir willful witwood who travels after becoming above 40 years old formidable says why the man that i mean is above 40 is is my observation am i right sir yes you are absolutely right uh it this is a very interesting point of the way of the world actually see uh, traveling has to is connected to the whole act of uh, maturity okay in those days men were expected to travel and know about the world and learn about the world before getting married so like marriage is the ultimate form of knowledge after that there no other knowledge is possible but before getting married you have to travel now sir willful wit would এখন ট্রাভেল করছে যখন সে অলমোস্ট ফর্টি এটা একটু অদ্ভুত ঠিক আছে সো দিস ইজ স্ট্রেঞ্জ সো ইয়াস আই মিন ফর ফর সার উইল ফুল উইটি পারে আই মিন নাস ডু নট কনসিডার দিস থিংস বাট ইয়েস সার উইল ফুল উইট ফুটের ক্ষেত্রেও এজটা একটা ফ্যাক্টর হয়ে দাঁড়িয়ে উইচ ইজ প্রবাবলি অ্যানাদার রিজন ওয়াই ইজ অলসো রিডিকিউল to a certain extent eh? uh, why he cannot be seen as a match for milaman okay and uh, ivana choudhury has asked uh, some women seem so desperate to hold on to their power through looks leading to lady wish folks long dressing and putting on makeup so sir uh, is it is it that congreve tries to ridicule women empowerment or is it to reply to Jer jeremy collier congreve made the contemporary women uh milaman enjoys the attentions of her is it of or d or ilma super ravish on her uh well yes very true uh women are part of the the fashionable society of uh, 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 of the restoration age and as i told you fashion uh makeup artifice is very important uh, and congreve is is reflecting upon that yeah, congreve is is rather through the main through the male characters 
congreve is producing an alternative discourse that is questioning the artifice and therefore speaking about a mutual trust but women are heavily dependent on makeup women uh, are are presenting themselves in an artificial light and that is yes because congreve is is not even imagining that there is a possibility of women to to be shown in a different light eta bujhte hobe thik ache tokhon restoration er shomoy kintu tomra jodi ajker dine dariye amra na eta bujhte parbo na karon ekhon onekta change hoye geche kintu in the during the restoration this was this was something that was very very common that the men এই অপশনটাই তাদের মধ্যে স্ট্রাইক করতো না যে উইমেন ক্যান বি সিন অ্যাজ সামথিং বিয়ন্ড সেক্সুয়াল অবজেক্টস তাই তো দিস দিস কাইন্ড অফ অবজেক্টিফিকেশন ওয়াজ ভেরি স্ট্রংলি প্রেজেন্ট সো দ্যাট আর্টিফিশিয়ালিটি মেকআপ এন্ড এন্ড দি দি অ্যাকসেসরিজ অফ বিউটি ওয়ার অলওয়েজ হাইলাইটেড স্যার देयर वाज अनदर क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम अर्घ कमल गुहरॉय ही आस्क्स ब्रिटिश Uh, writing of the restoration era is often called as neo classical why is this sir uh, well <laughs> this i i don't want to answer very much but but i'll just touch upon this because this is more of a literature question I mean, true I mean, very much uh, uh, it's uh, you see the neo classical age uh, begins from the 1660 onwards and, and moves on toward the margin with the August age or the age of prose and reason with the 18th century. Uh, for that, actually, you have to go back to Dryden, and Dryden is the the greatest neoclassical writer. Now, classicism, it's it's not exactly classicism. It's a new form of classicism, a return to classicism, primarily in the way in which uh, the sense of decorum, the sense of structure of a plot. the sense in which we we organize things in the restoration if you look at the plot of the way of the world it's very complex and and the 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 importance on the the perspective on man that also is a, is is evolving philosophically so all these things have are are because of the neo classical temper that is that is on the rise not only that the prose that is being used if you look at the way of the world it it uses prose so the prose that all that is used is also an offshoot of the neo classical style i would say but you see neo classicism is uh, more to be understood in art is more to be understood in the architecture in in painting okay in the in the styles of the the constructions that were there hey so we we plays in the the structure the language uh the ways in which uh, the 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 plot is is divides the unities that that is being emphasized these are important okay shreya roy asked when when were the first coffee house and the first chocolate house established please repeat the years 1652 first coffee house 1657 first chocolate house Okay, there is another uh, uh, a request from Tandrima Dhara. Uh, she uh, requested you to uh, repeat the term verbal py pyrotechnics. Uh, verbal pyrotechnics, though. Hmm. Yeah, there's, there's no. I mean, I, I cannot repeat the term verbal pyrotechnics. It's a term which is used by Bonami Dobri in her very influential restoration comedy. okay the book that made bonami dobri very famous actually tomare dutto jinish bole rakhi tumra as text tumra this is for the students although i think you know way of the world er ekta cult text ache cult text shobuj rang er ei je ei boi ta ha ei ei je boi ta edited by kajol sen gupto this is a book that you should uh, uh, mane at least tar introduction ta jodi tumra poro tahole khub tomader kintu labh hobe subidha কারণ আমি যে কথাগুলো বলেছি তার অনেকটাই কাজল সেনগুপ্তর ইন্ট্রোডাকশনে উনি আলোচনা করেছেন আর একটা হচ্ছে শীর্ষেন্দু চক্রবর্তী শীর্ষেন্দু চক্রবর্তীর এডিট করা ওরিয়েন্ট লং ম্যান থেকে একটা রিসেন্ট ওয়ে অফ দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড এর যে এডিশনটা বেরিয়েছে সেটাও যথেষ্ট ভালো টেক্সট হিসেবে দ্যাট ইজ অলসো ভেরি গুড নাও কাজল সেনগুপ্ত হ্যাজ অর রাদার বনমি ডবরি হ্যাজ রেফার টু ভার্বাল পাইরো টেকনিক্স রেফারিং 
probably she is trying to draw attention to the verbal brilliance to the to the flashy language uh, the use of wit the use of irony the use of repartee innuendo and all sorts of you know linguistic devices and that that leads on to a kind of a pyrotechnics it becomes technical it becomes uh, artificial but at the same time it gives a, a kind of a cosmetic uh, change or or a brilliance to the place uh, much of the 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 greatness of the way of the world resides in the way this verbal wit this this verbal pyrotechnics is used by the predominant characters ar jokhon er kothai holo mane eta muloto wit ekta jinish mone rakha dorkar congreve is distinguishing between the true wit and the wit wood thik ache mirabel ebong feinal hocche true wits ar wit wood is the uh, ar mane wit wood and petulant are the wit woods that is they are aspiring to be wits and there is always a distinction between these two i think uh, yeah i have answered this more or less okay sir thank you sir uh, uh, first of all, all on behalf of the english department of both kharagpur college and agra ssb college i would like to thank thank you <laughs> your kind comment to deliver an online lecture in our online lecture series for our students and scholars and wow what what a grand, uh, grand opening <laughs> um, <laughs> morning shows the day and what a morning it is sir <laughs> uh, it was really an informative and illuminating session and obviously samipan uh, pindra the investors with his saga city <laughs> there is no word enough to <laughs> to describe no, no, no. the man of your presentation okay. thank you <laughs> thank you yes uh, and thank you very much uh, my uh, it was my pleasure uh, i would like to thank once again uh, the principal sir i mean i uh, bidut sir probably and uh, dilip sir if i'm not wrong if i if i get it wrong i'm really sorry but but uh, and to the, to the young uh, colleagues of uh, my uh, you know at both these colleges of english departments Uh, it was wonderful and and great lectures are coming up uh, we are uh, i hope you enjoyed this and you will hope you will enjoy the coming lectures even more this was a great lecture <laughs> no word is enough to describe it and thank you thank and, you so much and finally i would like to thank all our students teachers faculty members and scholars across the globe for their kind cooperation and uh for today we have to save our data for the next lesson okay thank you sir and hope we will again get your consent whenever we will try to organize such online or offline ebare offline ever jabo obviously sir obviously yeah, we all actually we all want to uh, i mean end this and go to the real thing or uh, mane this is this is not uh, what we really like कर प्रचंड झड़ बिस्टि नेटवर्क बस एक बड़ रकम प्रब्लेम Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Sir. Okay. I'm waiting to see everyone in the next session. Am I audible? Yes, Chinmada, you are audible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 
let us end the session and we will meet again in the next session at at 6 am um, uh, where uh, jaydeep sarangi will deliver his invaluable speech okay goodbye to everyone bye